August 7th, 2018. It's Tuesday. It's Harp Tuesday. And in this episode, I thought I would talk about problem solving, specifically about this little section from the end, that's the very end of the prelude from DBC's Suite Bergamasque. The suite, of course, is famous for having Claire de Lune, that's the third suite, and nobody knows the other, a third movement, nobody knows the other movements. But this prelude is a beautiful piece, and it actually works quite well on the harp. So this is my own transcription, just playing from the piano music, making some making some arrangements and some changes, or just um, some ad adaptations. And this little bit towards the end was something that bothered me or troubled me a little bit, and I ended up coming up with a solution. So I think we should always be thinking about problem solving, not just in music, just in life, right? Being willing to uh, evaluate, reevaluate something or adapt or think, is there a better way that I can do this? Um, and I've had pieces that I've played for decades and, and learned, learned the piece again and, and thought, oh, you know, actually, I think this would be a better fingering here, or this would be something better to do here. It's just going to make it easier or sound better. So being, being able to evaluate, reevaluate and adapt is always good. And, and to problem solve, right? To try and figure out why something is not as comfortable as you would like. So for me, I, I, I talk about this a lot with students, just the, the sense of, of, of having the hands feel comfortable, being able to groove something and, and really have the hands feel comfortable. And sometimes when you're working on a section, it's not comfortable yet, but you know it's gonna get there. It's just, it's just learning the, that section, learning the notes, learning the shapes, practicing it, and you know it's gonna be fine. Other times, especially maybe early on, you, it's maybe a case of, so a section's hard, but it's hard because it's a little bit past your technique. The, so that um, I remember working on the piano on a piece by Chopin that had has a bunch of big uh, right-hand arpeggios. And as I started practicing those arpeggios, I realized that it wasn't a case of just having to do a lot of practice on them. It was also just time and, and my technique getting better. It was gonna take at least six months before that started to feel comfortable. It might, you know, maybe sounds okay, sort of, but that comfort, that in the hands and the, and the arms and the feeling like it's easy and effortless, right? Um, and it's not to say that six months later it was effortless, but it's it started to, I could see, I could feel how it, I wa how I wanted it to feel. So sometimes it's a case of our, uh, the section is hard because it's a little bit past our technique, and, and hopefully maybe by working on it we push our technique and get there. And sometimes we come across a section that maybe it's just the what, if we could change something about it, maybe the fingering it becomes so much easier. You know, I, I see that for sure, right? Where, where a student might say, oh, this, this, I'm just having a real hard time here. And we play around with a little bit, come up with a different fingering, and suddenly it's so much easier. That's great, right? That, that, that's kind of the easiest solution um, because it's, you just change something and hopefully it gets, gets easier. And sometimes that involves like detective work and problem solving of what it is that's making it hard. So this, um, fine, of course, at a slow speed as I was learning it, this little, um, oh, sorry. But I found myself unhappy both with the sound and with how it felt as I got faster. It's not super fast, but that... And that sounds okay because I've kind of I've kind of warmed up into that a little bit, but especially you get to the end of the piece, here it is, and it just, I just felt uncomfortable. So I tried to figure out what it is, what was it that was making it feel uncomfortable, and could I change anything to make it feel more comfortable? So one of the first things to th that I would tend to think about is, can I take trade off some notes in other hands? Can I take some notes in the left hand? Well, at the start, there's four notes in this left hand chord. Four notes in that left hand chord. Um, sorry. I could 
try and maybe take that D in the left hand. Might be an option. Um, but I didn't really, and again, maybe that, maybe I should have done more with trying to take that D in the left hand, but I, I, I still felt it was the start here, this little turnaround that was not always as, as even and as consistent as I would like and just felt awkward. Um, and there wasn't, didn't feel like there's any way to get the left hand involved. Now, of course, there's also the option. So it's that start, right? And of course, also this end as well is a bit challenging. Um, we could leave out the bottom notes in the right hand. So just go, sorry. Uh, that's of course going to be the cleanest way to do it. And uh, you could do it that way, right? It's kind of a case of maybe that even sounds the best, but then I'm aware of the fact that I'm not playing all the notes that DDC wrote. Um, and so I, I feel he deserves to have all his notes played and I, stubborn as well, just I'm stubborn of wanting to, I can do this, like, I'll, I'll play all those notes, but that is an option, right? And that, again, this was written for piano. So we maybe have some leeway to leave out some notes if we, if we feel that that's best. But I, I kept coming back to why does this, because I should, didn't seem like it should be that hard. Why does this feel so awkward? And I, for some whatever reason, I thought, well, what if I take that F and play it as an E sharp, and then suddenly there's no longer a gap between three and four. And, and you know, three and four, they, they, they're, uh, in terms of the hand itself, I think they're, they're, they work together, right? It's hard to have that independence between them. And so to have, no longer have a gap here, but to have a gap between two and three, no problem, that might be better. So, and of course the E, we haven't played that E for a long time. We can, we can put it in sharp and use that in harmonic instead. So. And we can do the same thing coming up, maybe. So instead of having to create this this gap again, and then we might as well find this looks like an A um, inversion instead of a F inversion here. I think so. Again, instead of having this fourth between four and three, it's a third, slightly smaller gap. And. As it turns out, that did make it easier. So it's still, it's still, it's still not maybe quite as consistently even as, as say playing, uh, sorry, as leaving out those, those bottom notes, but, It ended up being better. Um, just felt more comfortable under the hand. And again, partly I just did it to let's try, but analyzing it afterwards, it makes sense to me, right? That that if we are um, trying to put that third finger here and the fourth finger there, that's less comfortable than this shape, for me at least. And here at the end as well, because this was always just we got enough going on that to have that added stretch between four and three was just didn't feel as good as I would like. So uh, again, that's an interesting thing to kind of be aware of as you're playing. Is this, is this hard because I just need to practice it more? Is this hard because um, it's pushing my technique past where my technique currently is? Or maybe it's hard because I'm working harder then maybe I need to, if I can do some little change, some fingering change, or in this case, using, uh, actually playing different strings through the beauty of um, enharmonics, maybe things will be easier. So problem solving, yes. It's uh, always fun to, right, to look at a little section and realize that maybe there is uh, an even better way to do it. So hope that was useful. And oh, I'm I'm almost at, uh, I'm almost at 6,000 subscribers. So I'd encourage you, if you're not subscribed to my channel, uh, click the somewhere down here, 
click the um, subscribe button and click the bell button as well once you're subscribed to get uh, notifications when I upload a new uh, video. So I'll see you in two weeks time. <laughs> Cheers.